Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Okay, well, I have my fan right here, and I have my lip gloss right here, but I want to have a very real conversation with you guys today. So, I've been keeping a list in my phone of all kinds of videos, uh, a lot of drama videos to film over here. I have videos about uh, gay pride and what it means to me. I've been kind of saving that video until Pride Month. Um, I have videos about <laughs> the book Go Ask Alice and all the backstory on that and the fact that that book is not real and that it was uh, religious propaganda and what I found out about that. Um, I watched this uh, documentary called The Devil You Know, and it was about this woman that was running this online cult and how she believed that reptilian aliens had made a contract with the people that started the United States. And so I want to do a whole video about that. You guys know I'm diving into true crime. And so I keep lists of all these videos that I want to make over here. I have a whole video that I want to do about the documentary Paris is Burning. But I have this docu I have this uh, video kind of outlined where I wanted to talk about uh, YouTuber couples and the breaking up of YouTuber couples. But it kind of goes along with uh, a trend that I have been seeing lately on YouTube. And it really doesn't take a lot to look into it. Um, you know, by looking at people's numbers, by people looking at people's videos and things like that, you can see that there are many people out there that are kind of faking the system and faking the algorithm. They're actually people that typically talk a lot about the algorithm and they talk a lot about numbers and, and, and these are people that are watching numbers so closely to me, or so closely. And to me, it's interesting when I hear them talk about it because I'm really, to be honest with you, somebody that doesn't really watch my numbers very closely. I never really have, you know? I mean, do I know if somebody seems, if people seem more interested in one video more than another? Yeah, absolutely, because that video will get more views. And I'll be like, oh, well, yesterday I did this video and it got 10,000 more views than the video that I did it the day before. But I don't go in and look and see, like, who's watching my videos and whatever, like maybe once every three months, I'll go in there and be like, oh, it's, you know, 92% women that are watching, you know, my videos and this is the age group. But very rarely do I look at that stuff. And there are a lot of YouTubers and, and I think this is kind of encouragement or encouraged by management companies and encouraged by YouTube itself and the, the creator, you know, things will tell you that you have to look at your algorithm and you have to know this and you have to know that and whatever to be really successful. And, you know, I have to say, I, I've been pretty successful on YouTube, but I've never looked at that stuff. I've made videos because I'm passionate about making videos. In fact, I just got done doing a booktube video. That booktube video will probably get four, five, six hundred views. I And I, I just talked about how I'm coming up on my eight-year anniversary on that channel. May 11th will be eight years that I have been on booktube posting consistently. And I'm proud of that channel. I love being part of that community. You know, I don't think I have one video on that channel that's ever gotten 10,000 views. Maybe, but if I do, I'm not aware of it, you know? And um, I, I film on my Peterisms video channel and I get four, five, six hundred views. 300, I think, you know, some days on there. And um, I don't think I've ever had a video over there that's got five or 10,000 views. And I don't care. That's not why I do it. I do it because I'm passionate about it, right? And I do know that in the world that we live in today, that there are a lot of people that want social media. Like, and these are the people that I'll meet. And, you know, when I'll hear other people, because I already, <laughs> I already know what they do, right? But when other people come up to them, they'll be like, well, what do you do for a living? And they'll say, well, I, I'm a social media influencer or I'm an influencer. I always just think that's, I'm like, oh God, that's so, that's so phony, right? To say that, you know? But then they like are tricking the system and they're buying subs and they're buying views. And it's very, very obvious because these are people that like I will look at their videos because I'll already be like, okay, I kind of have it in my mind that maybe these people are like buying views and they're tricking the system and they're saying, hey, look, I passed 400,000 subscribers. I passed 600,000 subscribers. I passed 800,000 subscribers. And I'm like, this is interesting because the numbers aren't matching up for me. The math is not mathing, right? And so I'll look at it and it'll be like, I'll be like, it'll be like a Tuesday night and they'll have posted a video. And let's just say, I'm just gonna throw out some fake numbers. Let's just say like at, you know, eight o'clock, their video is at 10,000 views. And at nine o'clock, their video is at 20,000 views. And then at like two o'clock in the morning, their video jumps from like 40,000 views to like 120,000 views, which means that those purchased views are happening at two o'clock in the morning when most people aren't really looking at that channel. And it happens gradually over time. But like over the, like that two hours between 12 and 2 a.m., you'll see an increase of like 80,000 views. And I'm like, okay, there's not 80,000 people that are watching 
watching this video at any place in the world between 12 a.m. and 2, 2 a.m. That's just not happening. And so it's this whole trickery, this smoke and mirrors. And I'm like, and to be honest with you, it's so sad to me, this whole like idea of like fake couples and fake YouTubers. It's like that you're all doing it for just fame and success, right? And for a long time, I didn't really understand it because I was like, I don't really understand why you would go to these links to fake it because when you look in the mirror at the end of the day, you know your views are fake. You know your relationship is fake. You know your numbers are fake. You know that it's fake, right? Like back in the day, people used to accuse me of buying subscribers. And I've always said since I got on YouTube and anybody that knows me, that's a YouTuber, they don't call themselves an influencer or whatever. I'm, I stand strong behind this, right? That I didn't care on any of my channels if I had five subscribers or 50 million subscribers. I wanted to know that the numbers that I had were real. I just wanted to know that. Like I didn't need to fake the system because I was doing it because I was passionate about it, right? And so for me, I never for a long time understood why people were faking the numbers, why people were faking relationships to look a certain way, why people were doing this, why people were doing that. It didn't really make sense to me until what I realized was that their channels would grow if they were in relationships or they would get more opportunities if they were in relationships or if they hurt, hit certain numbers, they would get more opportunities, you know, or they would get more sponsorships or they would get offered platforms that some of us weren't getting. And so then it made sense to me. I was like, oh, so it's really for the long con is what it's about, right? Like you're really faking the system for the long con. You're really faking the numbers, the relationships and everything for where it can get you to the next phase of your life. So all these people that you're getting to engage in what you're doing right now, is this is really not about right now. This is about you're looking five years down the road of what that's gonna be. Well, the reality is I haven't seen that many people and I, I can spot it pretty quickly, okay? And several people that I know can spot it pretty quickly. I haven't seen that many people that can fake it to the top and retain that over a long period of time. At some point, it starts to fall, you know? And so you can kind of see it happen. And the way that I started kind of really getting interested in this, if you want to know the truth, is couples on YouTube and relationships. So way back in the day, and I've talked a lot about this on my other channels, I used to watch, this is, I mean, we're talking like 14 years ago, right? I used to watch a lot of gay couples on YouTube. And I think it was like, you know, a normalizing factor for me that Alex and I had gotten in this relationship. My husband and I have been together for 15 years, over 15 years, 15 and a half years. And we've been married for over 12 years, 12 and a half years. And so I started like watching a lot of these, you know, gay YouTuber couples back in the day. In fact, I've shared this a lot that one of the reasons why I started my vlog channel was because of Will and RJ that at the time were a couple and they were they had a channel called Shep 689. And I watched it religiously every single day. They were in the time they were in Gainesville, Florida, going to college, and then they moved to LA, and then they eventually got married, and then they broke up. And I think they posted consistently every single day for like seven years. And um, I watched their channel every single day. And I got, I'll never forget, like, getting introduced to books that, you know, Will liked. And I read those books because, you know, he introduced me to those. And I, my husband and I, my husband still loves Chipotle. And I can remember we would watch those videos together. And Alex, like, loved Chipotle because they loved Chipotle. Like, because he started going there because they went there. And, you know, things like that. And so that was kind of my entrance into this whole world. And, um, and you know, and they were actually one couple that would share a lot of stuff honestly on video. Like, if they had disagreements or arguments or fights, like, they would share them honestly. And, um, it's one of the reasons why, um, through the years, one of my, somebody that I really respect on YouTube is Zach Garcia and his husband, Alistair, because they are a couple, they used to do these videos, I don't think they do them as much anymore, called Couples Therapy, where they would sit down and they would just have conversations about their relationship, and they would often argue and stuff, and, you know, you could tell that they were uncomfortable filming it, but it was very real, and it was very honest of how couples really are, because 15 years ago, when I started watching these couples on YouTube, what I found was that... I would watch these couples and get invested in them for like two or three months. And then they, and I would say to my husband, like, they are so much in love. Like, they would look at each other and be like, oh my God, we're so in love. We love each other so much. Oh my God, we love each other so much. And I'd say that to my husband, like, they love each other so much, right? Like, we are not like that. And he would say to me, he'd say, that's not real, okay? That's for show. That's for entertainment. That's not real. And I'd be like, 
what do you mean that's not real? That's a fairy tale. That happens. You'd be like, no, it's not real. And then two months later, they break up. And then they rebrand their whole channel. And they'd be like, oh my god, we're going to be friends forever. We love each other. We're going to be friends forever. And then two months later, they'd be with somebody else. And they each started up two new channels. And then three months later, they'd broken up with those people, right? And so it was all for just YouTube stuff. It was all, and back then, there was no TikTok. People weren't really looking at Instagram as much. So it was all just for YouTube. It was all these couples, right? And the reality is, I think out of all the couples, and I watched, I mean, probably 20 couples at the time, you know, 15 years ago. Out of all those couples, there's probably only one of them that I think is still together out of all those couples today. And um, when I started on YouTube because of that, and I had read this article that people that are constantly posting pictures, I don't know when I read this article or where I found it, but it said something to the effect of, because I, I was reading some article about relationships and, you know, success rates and whatever. And like one of the, the highest success rates for couples, I don't know if you guys know this, is high school sweethearts. High school sweethearts have one of the highest success rates for longevity. And so when I was like reading this article or these articles about success rates of couples, one of the things I found is that people that are consistently posting about their relationship online and they're posting pictures on Instagram or Facebook like every day and like, hey, look at us. We're so happy and whatever. Not like on vacation or Christmas or whatever, but like every day. They're posting every day. Day. And, you know, at that time, I was like, Alex, we never, like, post that many pictures together and stuff. And he's like, okay, do you want me to just come over and we can take a picture and you can post it or whatever? Because I saw all these couples that we knew in real life, and they were posting all these pictures together, right? Like, heterosexual couples, gay couples, whatever. They're posting all these pictures every single day. And I read this article, and the article said that people that need constant online validation for their relationships are really insecure in their own relationships and that's why they're constantly posting so that people can look at them and say oh couples goals and you're gonna make it and this we love you so much not you're gonna make it but like you guys are exactly what we want to be what's interesting to me about that is that like and i've talked about this on my other channels it makes me sad you know Almost every single one of these couples that we were friends with, with the exception of like one or two, all of those people that we were friends with 15 years ago that we used to go you know, out with regularly and go out to dinner with and hang out with, every single couple, gay or straight, from 15 years ago has since broken up, gotten divorced, gotten married, gotten divorced again and again and again, had kids with this person, gotten divorced, had kids with that person, gotten moved here, moved there, whatever. I mean, it's we're literally the only ones left. And we were not the couple that was supposed to make it. When my husband and I got together, we did not want to be in a relationship. Neither one of us did, right? And so we were just kind of winging it, having fun. The fact that we're still together 15 and a half years later is crazy. And we it has not been an easy road, you know? And so I saw all this stuff. And so when I got online, I knew that there were some certain, there were certain things that I wanted to share about online. I wanted to share about my relationship with my husband. I wanted to share about my coming out story and what I had gone through and things like that. I didn't really know how to do it. And actually Zach Garcia is the person that encouraged me to do that. And I said, nobody wants to hear my coming out story. I'm like, you know, 40 something at the time. He goes, there is somebody out there that might relate to your story. So you need to put your story out there. I wanted to share aspects of what it was like to be a gay man today, an older gay man in my society that was in a relationship and things like that. I wanted to talk about, you know, losing my mom and grief. I wanted to talk about my uh, recovery and my, you know, addiction and recovery and sobriety. That was very, very important to me. And I didn't want to sugarcoat it. I, I, I always said from day one, if I was going to get on video and I was going to talk about my relationship, you were going to get the real deal. If, if we were in, you know, headed towards divorce and we had the intermarriage counseling, that was what you were going to get. And that's what you got. That's what I shared. I shared on here that we were headed to divorce and we went to marriage counseling and it was bad and we almost didn't make it. And we dedicated a year and said, we're going to give it everything we've got for a year. And if we don't make it after a year, then we're going to go our separate ways. You know, and I've shared on here about, I don't understand people that are friends with their exes, but more power to you, you know, because I think there's this ideology on YouTube that any YouTube couple that breaks up has to remain friends forever. That's not my story. I'm not friends with my exes. I'm civil to them, but I'm not besties with them. I don't want to hear who they're fucking. I don't want to hear who they're kissing. I don't want to hear about the relationships because we shared intimacy. We shared closeness. Some of them were my closest friends. I don't want to hear all that about them. I'm not, to be honest with you, that open-minded. To I, I want the best for them. I love my exes, but I don't need to be on that level with them. If I see them, I'm like, hey, it's great to see you. Glad things are going that well. I don't look into their life. You know, I'm not even really friends with most of them on social media things. So I don't understand that whole idea that 
if a YouTube couple breaks up, they have this um, responsibility to their audience to remain friends and all this kind of stuff. And then one of the things I've been seeing recently is that when couples break up online that have built careers online together, that then it... The, all the comments are like, oh my god, I don't believe in love. Love doesn't exist anymore. There's no such thing as love. And this even happens on reality TV, you know? This even happens on, you know, with, so like, reality TV stars and things like that when they break up and, and people saying like, you know, oh my god, like, this isn't, you know, there's no love anymore. And I can remember years ago, so several of my husband's friends are like new, um, Mark Miller and Ethan Hethcote because they're both from Indiana and they had gone to college with them and stuff like that. And so I started watching Mark Miller's channel of which he had his then boyfriend, Ethan Hethcote on his channel for a long time. And so I watched their videos and all their videos, they were like very, very happy. And then there was a period of time when they like broke up and they did a video talking about breaking up. Then they came back and they deleted that video and acted like that video never existed and they just were happy all along. Then they moved states and did this video that was so bizarre, I'll still remember it to this day, of them like sitting around on these couches, I think they were in Tennessee at the point, and they're like, yeah, we just want to do this life update. You could tell they were so disconnected and they were not together at all anymore, and they were just like, yeah, we don't really know what's going on, and then the next thing you hear is that they break up, and everybody's like, um, I don't believe in love anymore, and there's no such thing in love, and blah, 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 whatever, and I'm like... Because two people realize they don't want to be together anymore. And what I realized was, what I was witnessing was this need that they felt, this responsibility that they felt to their audience to keep up this charade, right? That we're going to be friends forever and blah, 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 blah. They don't follow each other on social media anymore, I don't think. I think that happened years ago. Well, recently in the last couple years, my husband and I, since the lockdown... He brought attention to them. I, I didn't even know who they were, but Chris Olsen and his then boyfriend, Ian Padgett. And um, there was like an age difference between them, which there's an age difference between my husband and I. Chris is sober and talks a lot about his sobriety. And so they were together in this apartment in New York while they during the lockdown. And so I started watching a lot of their videos and they built this platform on um, TikTok originally and then Instagram and they made YouTube videos together. Then they broke up, and then they come out with this breakup video about how we're going to be best friends forever and blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff, right? And I'm like, so recently, I'm like, it was either them or somebody else. I was like, I just happened to, I don't follow any of these people anymore on Instagram or whatever. But when they broke up, they were like, we're going to be friends forever. And then you never saw them again. They were like, we don't know if we're going to be in videos together. We don't know how it's going to go, but whatever. And... They even came out and talked about that they felt like they couldn't, like, the, the pressure of needing to stay together because of people felt like this is love and this is what love looks like. Love does not always look like a fairy tale. Love does not always look constant. Love does not, I mean, you know, I'll never forget when I talked to my mom years ago, you know, and I said, like, I, I was like, I can't ever, you know, find somebody and blah, 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 whatever. And she was like, most, you're never promised a mate in life. And it was, like, devastating to me. And what I realized was, you know, I had had like five to ten boyfriends and my mom had been single all along, you know? And she was like, if you find love once in life, you're really, really lucky, but you're never promised, you know, a, a partner in life. You're never promised a mate in life. We were watching like Jerry Springer or something, you know? And so recently I was looking at somebody, I can't remember who it was, it was somebody, oh, there's this, somebody sent this to me because there's this huge, and I didn't really know about this couple, um, it's that uh, Pierre guy from France and his boyfriend, Nick, and they were together and they built, like, their TikTok channels and all this kind of stuff together. And um, then it came out and, like, the Pierre guy, like, something about his age, like, he, he acted like he was, like, 23, but he's really, like, almost 40 or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, there, somebody had sent me this and it was, like, and, I, and that, that's when I went back and I, like, looked at, like, the Chris and Ian thing. And somebody had sent me this thing and they were, like... It was all these people underneath this comments, and they were like, oh, they're not friends anymore. They said they were going to be friends and whatever. People send me the most bizarre stuff to look at and make videos about. Most of it I never do. But this intrigued me because I didn't really know much about this couple. And then what I saw was that they were trying to build separate careers and that they had broken up. And they said, like, we'll always remain each other's friends. But then at some point they had unfollowed each other. And then I went and I was like, oh, well, that's exactly what happened on 
Chris and Ian's, you know, careers as well. And they came out with this breakup video, which is very consistent of what happens, right? Like, we decide we're going to break up. So, for our audience, we have to come out with this breakup video. And in the breakup video, what we're going to say is, we're going to be friends forever. And we're not going anywhere. We love each other very, very much. We've just decided that we don't uh, want to be together anymore. And it's always interesting to me because it's like, it follows right after, like, they've had, like, they've just moved into a new apartment or they just got, like, Will, Will and RJ, they have just gotten married like the year before you know I think with this Nick and Pierre they had just gotten married like the year before and it's like okay did y'all go to marriage counseling did you all talk to anybody about this like what's so catastrophic happened in your relationship that you can no longer be together but you ha and that you have to end things now and you don't even give it a try you got married, you moved into a house, you moved into this, you did this, you're making these huge life decisions and you're showing all this to your audience and you're building a career and you're saying, and people are saying, it's nobody's business what goes on in these people's relationship when you've literally made it people's business, Your relation, your, you've made your relationship people's business. In fact, it is your business. It's your business model. Your relationship has been your business model, right? And so they come out and they say, they can't say, well, he fucked around on me and so I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. Or he said to me he's not attracted to me anymore. Or, you know, he wants to have an open relationship and I don't want that. You can't come out and say that. So you got to come out and you got to say, well, we just realized that we don't want the same things in life, but we're going to always be friends. And then three months down the road, they unfollow each other on all social media. And then what you realize is, no, that was never true. They've not talked to each other since the day that they parted ways, right? They did that for their audience. And it's this expectation that audiences have of this weird world of fakery, okay? That relationships are always fairy tales and always love and last forever. And that YouTube channels always grow this way. When YouTube channels actually grow like this, okay? They don't grow like this always, you know? Unless you're Mr. Beast. They just don't. You're going to lose subscribers, you're going to gain subscribers. You're going to lose subscribers, you're going to gain subscribers. Some videos are going to do better than others, right? But we have this ideology that we have to feed out there that you're only successful if you're constantly growing. Whether that's for a YouTube channel or whether that's for a relationship. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is bullshit when it comes to relationships, okay? And that is one of the reasons why I decided when I got on YouTube, if I was going to share any part of my uh, relationship, that you are going to get the real thing. You are going to get the real deal over here. We are going to get the talking about the, the marriage counseling, the possible divorce. I didn't want anybody to idolize. If anybody was going to say to me, your couple goals or idolize us as a relationship, which you shouldn't anyway, you should never do that because you'll always lose by comparison if you compare your relationship to somebody else. Always. Your relationship is significant. Is, is, profound to you and singular to you. It's it's not comparable to anybody else's relationship, period, in a story. And that's something I had to learn, okay? That if I put my relationship side by side to this person's relationship, it's never going to look that way. And just because this person found love, you know, and they fell apart, doesn't mean that love doesn't exist. That's bullshit. You know, maybe their next relationship is their forever relationship, Maybe they'll decide they don't want to ever be in a relationship again and that they're really in love with themselves, which is healthy. Self-love is healthy. You know, maybe they realize they just want to date for the rest of their lives and they weren't ever meant to be settled down. And that's okay. That's normal too. You know, I think we need to normalize what's healthy for each person is healthy for that person. And if a couple breaks up, they break up. Okay, and then we don't have to force YouTubers like, you know, Mark and Ethan to get in videos and fake it and act like they're still going to always be friends for each other when they really don't want to be in the same room together, you know, or Chris and Ian, that it's uncomfortable and people are talking about it and writing articles about how it's uncomfortable that they're even in the same space together, you know, and all this, and it goes into the straight world too. It's not just the gay world. There's a lot of straight couples like this. And I can remember years ago, you know, years ago when I talked to Trisha Paytas and other big YouTubers on the phone and they would tell me, there are so many fake relationships out there. You have no clue, right? Like, I mean, I talk a lot about like Shane and Ryland. You can tell that relationship is real because they actually show kind of like, you know, Shane will say something and Ryland will side eye him. That's real. That's consistent with any real relationship. You know, that doesn't mean that I don't love to watch couples fight on YouTube and I don't love all that. But that's one of the reasons why, you know, people ask me all the time, oh, you and Alex should start a couples channel. I'd love to start a couples channel. But if I'm going to start a couples channel, you're going to see us arguing over where we're going for dinner. Because that's normal, okay? 
you're going to see us like saying, I don't feel like you're listening to me. And him being like, well, I don't feel like you listen to me either. And then us taking that to therapy, you know? You're going to see us being so in love. It's like the first time we've ever seen each other, you know? And then two days later, being upset about something. Because that's normal relationships. Falling in in love and falling out of love and falling in love and finding each other again and finding things to be passionate about. You know, I had lunch not too long ago with my cousin and a family friend of ours who is, it just was her birthday, you know, and she's in her 80s. And she and her husband have been married for like 65 years. And I said to her something about like, do, do, like, what do you guys talk about? What do you get? I can't remember how the conversation went. She goes, like, don't you change and then you outgrow this relationship? Because I ask people that have been together for a long time what relationships look like, how to have the best relationship. Because people that have been together for a long time are typically people that know. She goes, yeah, we change every single day. We, all, we are constantly changing. And she goes, but that's what's so exciting about the relationship. We get to learn about each other all over again, you know? Before I got married, I asked a friend of mine who had been married for some 50 plus years. And I said, what's your best piece of advice? And he said, divorce is not an option. And I looked at him and I go, people get divorced all the time. Divorce is an option. He said, you have to go into it with the ideology that divorce is not an option, that you can make it through anything, right? And so I think that's that. I think you have to keep your eye on the prize and what do you want? I can tell you right now, our marriage is better now for having gone through all the bullshit that we went through, the fighting, the arguing, the screaming, the yelling. I mean, I gave you some examples today, but we don't really argue over where we're going to dinner anymore. I mean, we don't because we realize those are the arguments that we used to have back in the day that would, you know, blow up into something else. And we don't really do that today anymore. There's not really any necessity for it. That's not to say we don't argue from time to time because that's normal in any relationship. I just did a whole video about this on my Peterisms channel, I think the other day, you know, that, you know, this idea that relationships are perfect and love and, and it's all this fake bullshit that you see online, you know? Don't buy into the hype. Don't buy into the bullshit. Don't buy into these couples that are incessantly in love and they don't ever say anything to you about, I'm not saying they have to show you fighting. I'm not saying that they have to show you arguing or moving out or packing bags or separating. I'm not saying that we have to show all that. Just show honesty, you know? Say, no, we're struggling right now. That's enough. You know, but for me to go from marital bliss and, oh my God, we're so happy every single day and we do it six times a day to, you know, all of a sudden we're breaking up and here's our sit down video of you. Hey, you guys, we're really sorry. And this is the first serious video they've ever done. We really want to, you know, share with you guys that we've come to the, the common decision that we're going to break up. And the other one goes, yeah, it's been a really hard decision for us. And it's the last video up in their, in their, their channel, right? And then people are in their comment sections going, team this person, team that person. That's bullshit. Team, unless something tragically horrible has happened in the relationship, like the whole scandal situation. I mean, I understand that then. But just two people breaking up. Why are we taking sides? You know? We need to normalize what a healthy relationship looks like. A healthy relationship doesn't look like smiles and rainbow shit everywhere every day. Okay? That's not what a normal relationship looks like. And we need to normalize what normal influencers look like. There are very few influencers, which I hate that word, YouTubers, TikTokers, Instagrammers that blow up overnight, okay? The majority of people gain a thousand, lose 500. Gain a thousand, lose 600. Gain a thousand, lose 200. Their views go up and down. Very few YouTubers, Instagrammers, TikTokers, anybody out there. I've talked to my fair share of TikTokers. I'm not that much on TikTok, okay? That will say, I was doing great on TikTok. And then I moved over and I'm doing better on Instagram than I'm doing on TikTok. My TikToks aren't, you know, getting any views anymore. Nobody cares about watching them. And then they'll do great on Instagram and then they'll, they'll be like, they'll call me up and they'll be like, oh my God, I'm not getting any views on Instagram. I'm like, it's, listen, nobody's watching anything right now. It'll pick up. Don't worry about it. And then two months later, they'll call me and they'll be like, oh my God, it picked up. Thank you so much for saying that to me. You know, it's not constant. It's not this constant movement upwards. And people that show that are faking it. It's fake. For who? For who? So people can get excited for you and you can get excited for yourself over the fraudulence so that then you can get offered opportunities that you didn't really earn. I would rather earn opportunities based on the truth than earn opportunities based on fake, okay? That's like taking a class and you are cheating, a t you are cheating on a test in a weighted class and then getting a scholarship as a result of your fake grades. I don't want that. I want to know that what I put out there was the truth, you know?
Whether it's about my relationship, whether it's about anything in my life, whether it's about YouTube or whatever it is. I'm so tired of the fakery and the bullshit, okay, in the influencer space. It needs to stop. It needs to stop with people faking and, and photo editing their bodies to a point that doesn't even look realistic, okay? Listen, this is who I am. This is what you're going to get, right? Like, we need to stop with all the fakery. We need to get back to where we were years ago. We need to get back to fucking real. I'm tired of the fakeness of it, you know? I'm tired of it. You guys see me get heated in videos and calling people out and calling this out? Yeah, because I'm tired of the fakeness of it. I'm tired of it, you know? Let's get back to real. That's why I'm attracted to watching real. I remember interviewing way back in the day a YouTuber called Johnny F uh, Johnny Boy XO. And she said, and I asked her, why do you think people like to watch your videos? And she said, because I think real knows real. And today, in 2024, still making videos. I knew the camera was going to stop right at the very last moment. And today, in 2024, I'm telling you, I really believe the same thing. I think real knows real. I think real people like to see real relationships because it normalizes their relationship. It did not make me feel good back in the day, okay? When my husband and I would have a fight over where we were going for dinner, which wasn't even that big of a fight anyway that every couple has, okay? Well, I don't want Chinese. Well, I want pizza. Well, I don't want pizza. You know, I want this. And, you know, it was just this little argument. And I'm watching this video where they're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm thinking that's what normal is, right? We need to normalize real, I, for years and years and years, looked on Instagram at these people that have these amazing bodies and looked fantastic in clothes that I couldn't fit in, right? And then I would see them in a video and I'd be like, they don't even look like that. Like, that's not even real. Like, unless they're in the gym seven days a week, that's not real. That's not what real body image looks like. That's not what real bodies look like. And who are they doing it for themselves? Who are they doing it for, Right? And then I started wondering, my channel's not growing. My channel's not doing this. My channel's not doing that. And I start talking to all these other people, people that aren't even within the drama community, people that do all kinds of other things. And they're like, Peter, it's normal. That's YouTube. And I start looking at it. And then I start realizing there's a lot of people out there that are faking it. Hell, Trisha Paytas told me that, you know, seven years ago. How much fakery there is on YouTube. All these fake relationships out there. And the reason they get into them is to build channels. And then they go their separate ways to build their individual channels. And build their individual options and their individual careers. And it's all for the long haul, right? And people fake numbers and fake this and fake that, right? Real knows real. Hey, listen. I want to stick with the real. You know, I'm real all day long. That fake bullshit, you can take it and run with it, alright? I don't want that. I want a l life filled with real. Whether that's in a relationship, whether that's in a conversation, or whether that's on YouTube. I want real. I don't want fake. You can take that fake bullshit and you can go run with it because I don't want it. And I think it's really sad for those people that are living that fake world that feel the need. Because they know, right? Like if you're doing all that, you know that you're putting on this facade. So who are you doing it for? Because ultimately you're probably doing it for yourself. So, I don't know. For me, I'd rather do the work on myself and work through why I need to feel that kind of validation. That I'm faking it to the point where I know it's fake, you know? And then I'm getting all that adoration from people around me for this fake relationship or this fake... I know. I'd rather it be real all day long. For myself and for the people that watch me. You know? I'd like them to know that growth and any career choice that you do can be slow and steady, right? And slow and steady runs the race. That relationships look like they have ups and downs. That they don't look like constant smiles and people doing it five and six times a day. Yes, that might be a segment or a part of your relationship, but that's not every moment of your relationship. And when we need to stop putting this expectation on influencers out there to have perfect bodies, perfect relationships, perfect homes, all that kind of stuff right? We need to stop raising our expectations to that level because then what we're saying is we need the same thing for ourselves. Those expectations aren't realistic, you know? I'm never going to live in a Kardashian home with Oreos stacked up in a, in a glass jar. That ain't me. That ain't me, okay? You're lucky if I roll up the tin and put it in the, in the pantry. That's not me, okay? It's never going to be me, and I'm not going to lie about who I am so that somebody out there likes me for a fake version of myself. It ain't worth it. I've been through too much in my life, and trust me, by the time that you get to my age and you lived what I live, the fakery of it all, it ain't worth it. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.